Prime Minister Golub, thanks for joining DW. Now, your visit here, of course, has been very much dominated by questions of energy overshadowed by the war in Ukraine. President Zelensky is angry right now uh, that Canada is providing a turbine to Germany that will be used uh, in Nord Stream 1. He says that this is a sign of weakness from the West towards Russia. Can you see what, where he's coming from? Do you agree with him on that? Mm, I agree with him on many things, but not on this one. Uh, I believe that right now Ukraine deserves all the support it can get from Europe. But Europe has to stay strong in order to provide support. By weakening Europe at its heart, in Germany, at its industrial base, it doesn't help Ukraine. So, yeah, I believe that turbine needs to get back as soon as possible. And if the gas flows resume, that's a good sign for Europe. And later on for Ukraine as well. Now, of course, uh, Russian gas is not just about Germany, it's about many countries in Europe, Slovenia included. included. Absolutely. Slovenia uh, takes more than 80% of its gas 100%. from Russia. 100% is Russia-based. Even yeah. worse than that. There's been a lot of talk about uh, solidarity within the European Union over gas when it comes to the winter, for example, if it looks like Europe is going to freeze. But aren't you concerned that as a small country, Slovenia would be at the back of the line behind giants like Germany when it came to distributing the gas if there was a real crisis? Okay. Actually, you just mentioned the main reason why we're pushing for solidarity on a European basis. But then we also have a backup plan, which means that we already have a solidarity pact with Italy as our large uh, gas consuming neighbor. So we count that we as a small country, together with Italy, we can weather the situation much better than alone. So yeah, but again, no single nation can truly uh, no truly find a right solution for the winter if the gas is switched off by the Russians. We've also been talking a lot, of course, about weapons provision to Ukraine. Um, there's been a lot of controversy, some angry criticism around these processes of swaps in providing weapons to Ukraine, whereby a country like Slovenia will provide some weapons, and then Germany will backfill from its stocks uh, to a country like Slovenia. What have you come away with in terms of your talks with Olaf Scholz today? Have you come away with any concrete decisions? Well, not yet, but I believe we are on the right track. We Perhaps we removed from the table a couple of items which were blocking the uh, talks in the past. I believe now the path is clear, which means we can come to a conclusion within a month. Uh, not, But on the other hand, in parallel to that, we will not wait. We already started the uh, measures. Uh, within the army, meaning that we are getting the weapons prepared for the logistics, for the transport. Because that's really the most time-consuming thing, is to get them prepared and then shipped to Ukraine. The, the last batch that we did, uh, it took, like three, like, took us more than two months just to get it shipped. Now, you mentioned that you've removed a couple of blockages. Could we, you be more specific what you've achieved today? It was about the common understanding of what we want to achieve and how to proceed. N I wouldn't, I, would, I wouldn't want to go into details because it's obviously classified, but yeah, there were some uh, different views on how to proceed, and I think today we came to a common understanding. Germany has had a lot of criticism, particularly from Eastern European countries, but from some other quarters too, of, of being kind of hesitant on the provision of weapons, of kind of going slow and making these sort of swap systems more complicated than they need to be. Do you come away today confident that Germany is really committed to this, um, to providing as many weapons in as uncomplicated a way as possible to Ukraine? Now, this is perhaps a, a, step too, a step too much, but what I believe is that, there, of course, there are different nations, and we do act in a different manner. There are nations like Slovenia who go gradually, and there are nations like Germany who goes like, wow, all in. And I believe once the industrial base of Germany really puts all in, in also in weapon industry, uh, there is a lot of huge, uh, let's call them results, that we can expect for the future, but it takes a lot of time to get here. But I think we are closing to this step for the future. Yeah. And, but what do you think has been holding that back then? What do, what is, what's getting in the way of that? It's hard for me to uh, judge uh, the cultural, uh, the culture of each nation, but in Germany it's like, just go back two years and think what was the reason 
when the car industry of Germany switched from combustion to electric. This is similar. So it took them longer than Americans, but once they did it, they did it all in. Prime Minister Golub, many thanks for speaking to DW today. You're welcome.